Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this development control meeting. My name is Cathy Guthrie, and I'm the chairman today. May I first of all remind you of some domestic arrangements. Toilets are situated outside the meeting room opposite the stairs. Cold water is also available outside the meeting room. If the fire alarm should sound, please leave the meeting room by following the fire exit signs and meet on the Ipswich Town Football Club training pitch. Do not re-enter the building until you are told it is safe to do so. Please switch off all mobile phones or turn them to silent. I would like to remind everyone present that this meeting will be live broadcast onto the internet and will be capable of repeated viewing. The whole of the meeting will be filmed, except where there are confidential or exempt items. If you make a representation to the meeting, you will be deemed by the Council to have consented to being filmed and to the possible use of those images and sound recordings for webcasting and or training purposes. The Council, members of the public and press may record, film, photograph or broadcast this meeting when the public and press are not lawfully excluded. Finally, can members and officers please ensure that you press the microphone for speaking and turn off when you have finished. So the introductions are on the top table here. We have Ian Dupre, our legal officer. We have Philip Isbell, head of planning, um, chief planning officer. There's myself, of course, Cathy Guthrie. We have Robert Carmichael, our governance officer. Vincent Pierce, who will be one of the planning, um, senior planning officers to present a case or two. And Mandy Smith, who's in charge of steering and everything that goes wrong with the internet. Um, we have other, ward mem um, other officers there. We have ward member availability here. Most importantly, we have our councillors who are elected councillors and will debate and make a decision on the application before you. We do have one person who's running late. They may attend the chamber, but if they have not been at the beginning of the debate, they will not be allowed to vote on that particular application. And then, of course, there's your good selves in the back there made up of members of the public, applicants, agents, and if you have requested your three minutes to speak, we have the technology, and you're very welcome to come and speak. I think that covers everything there. So we move on to the agenda, if you would, please. Apologies for absence and substitutions. Thank you, Chair. We have one apology this morning from Councillor Richardson, and Councillor Mayor is substituting for him. Only one, as we've said as well, is Councillor Matheson is running late. He's not just being late. To receive any declarations of pecuniary or non-pecuniary interest by members. None. Declaration of lobbying. Yes, I think we've all had uh, a letter. I, is this for the first and second items? Uh, mine is first and third. First and third. Right, okay. Thank you. Declarations of personal site visits. No. Confirmation of the minutes of the meeting held on the 2nd of October. And there has... Yes. Yeah, I'll just go through that, Chair. Yeah, there has been a slight amendment to one page of it. Uh, thank you, Chair. There's just one slight amendment for clarity purposes, which is in 58.12 of the minutes. And it's uh, to read as follows in instead of the current wording. So, after considering the concerns raised by members, the report from the officer, the representations from the public speakers and the debate from members, the chair decided to send the application to the Planning Referrals Committee formed of the MSDC Development Control A and B committees for determination due to significant concerns that had been raised regarding the application. So it's just a bit of um, <coughs> formalising and clarifying there. So thank you for that. And with anything else involved, uh, I won't go through it page by page unless there's an amendment required. So pages 1 to 10. Can I sign those minutes, please? Thank you very much. I'll do that during the meeting. Thank you. To receive notification of petitions in accordance with the Council's petition scheme. None received, Chair. And the schedule of planning applications will be the order in which they appear on the um, papers. And just as a little extra to help everybody running through this, I'm sure you've all worked it out for yourselves, but if um, those of you who have paper copies um, would like to turn to page 39...
you'll see we now have an index of things, um, and this is helpful to members because everything is going to be in there each time. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't a page reference to it, so if you want to run through the page reference that I've put down, um, nothing for the first one, Appendix 1. Appendix 2 is on page 24. Appendix 3 is on 41 to 42. Appendix 5, Flood and Water 43, Fire and Rescue 44, 45, 46, Highways 48, Public Realm 49, and Enforcement 50. So if anybody wants to refer the papers, we've got them all down there. So. Jenny, you said page 24. Yeah. Do you mean page 3 of the supplementary well, bundle? Um, just one moment. Uh, well, yes, okay, so that's very helpful, thank you. Actually, page 24 is the planning history of it, but we've actually got the late papers of the um, page three of that. Uh, the, the previous decision, so that was, sorry, my misleading thing there. So we've got that in late papers. Okay, so thank you very much, Vince. If you would like to help us with this one and start the application, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, members. I was going to say ladies and gentlemen, but members of the public. First item... This morning is a retrospective planning application at I Airfield, and although the postal address is Castleton Way I, it is actually in the parish of Yaxley. What I want to do, because this is a retrospective application, i.e. it is, uh, the applicant is now seeking planning permission for works that have already been undertaken, and they, have, they are doing it in the format of a full application. I just need to explain that a planning, whilst a planning breach has occurred, insofar as they have extended the property without planning permission, that in itself is not illegal. Uh, I do need to emphasise that. Also, not before you this morning, are a number of other applications listed on the screen that will be dealt with in due course. We're still considering those. Vince, can I just hold you for one second, please? Yeah. We have got Councillor Matheson. I wonder, can we start I, again? I as think we we should, sure, yes. do, do you mind? It I really don't is mind. just yeah. a short I'm thing. If you'd like to too. take a seat, Councillor Matheson, we're just... Don't worry about signing anything. We know you're here. Mm. Yeah. And while you're walking up there, can you think, have you got any declarations of interest? Have you had any personal site visits? Yes, I, I went to Hill House Lane um, on Monday and looked at it from the right way. Thank you. And um, have you had any lobbying? We've had a letter. Yes. Did you have a letter for the yes. first two? Yes, a letter. Yes. Thank you for that, Councillor. Sorry to rush you on. Um, but we literally had literally just started. So thank you very much, Vince, if you'd like to just start again when okay. Councillor Matheson has taken his seat. Good morning, right. Councillor Matheson. Are you comfortable? We're just going to get you a glass of water in case that's helpful as well. <laughs> no, he's done. Good morning, Councillor Matheson. What we're looking at first is a retrospective full application 
Applicants are seeking planning permission for works that have already been undertaken. And whilst the postal address of this site is Castleton Way I, it is actually within the parish of Yaxley. You'll note from the committee report that there is a planning permission already for the construction of a chicken processing plant. What we're looking at today are a number of extensions to that building and we're seeking, or the applicants are seeking to regularise those extensions because they weren't included in the earlier planning permission. I need to re-emphasise that the undertaking of development without planning permission is not illegal. So whilst this is a retrospective planning application, the applicants have not committed an offence. Behind the scenes, we have another five applications that are currently under consideration for works that have been undertaken that weren't part of the original planning permission. But they are not matters that I am bringing you this morning. They will be dealt with outside of this meeting at a future date. As you can see, the boundary between I and Yaxley is just to the right of the application site. And Yaxley and I sit in the northern half of the, the district. In my view, the issues that members are going to have to grapple with this morning, in terms of the planning issues, are, will the building as now extended result in a material increase in the number of chickens being processed? And the answer to that is no. Will the extensions result in a material and detrimental increase in traffic? And we will look at that, that issue because I know that's a concern of many local people. Will they result in a material loss of parking spaces? There has been concern expressed that the number of parking spaces that should have been provided are now being under provided and we can deal with that. And the short answer is no, there is a slight increase. Will the extensions result in visual harm? And will the extensions result in new forms of residential amenity harm, i.e. people living nearby? And the other question is, does, do the extensions raise any new issues that weren't previously considered? So let me just flick back one. On the left of the screen, you will just see in mauve a number of extensions on the outer edges of the building. I have got a much clearer slide, so we'll come to that in a moment. I've identified in red the actual processing plant. Access to it is via a connection to the A140, which runs north-south, just to the left of the processing plant, and there's a service access to the right, shown in red on that screen. Aerial photograph, you'll notice that this is at the southern end of I Airfield. And there is already a lot of development at the northern end. We may come on to more recent developments at the northern end as we go through this presentation. In the emerging local plan, the flashing blue circle and the little red processing plant in the middle of it is clearly within uh, an employment area. Hence the reason that the processing plant was approved in the first place. So we're now looking at the question of land use on this occasion. We're perfectly satisfied that the extensions are acceptable in principle within an employment area. I put I neighbourhood plan on the screen because we have had representations from I town council, but as I said at the start of the presentation, the site is actually within Yaxley. Suffice to say there is nothing proposed here that is contrary to the neighbourhood plan in I. The only adopted plan that we have in respect to the airfield, and this is adopted guidance, takes us back to 2030, is a planning position statement. And you'll notice from the diagram on the right that the chicken process plant is within an area that was always envisaged to be employment uses. We've had a number of other documents that have come later, but they do not have any formal status but I've put them on the screen for the sake of being comprehensive. Very few constraints in the immediate locality. We have a footpath 
some distance away to the northwest, and we have a little cluster of listed buildings within Yaxley, but on the other side of the A140, so remote from the chicken processing plant. So let's look at the extensions one by one. First extension is merely an extension to the backroom production area, a modest extension of just 132 square metres. Two little extensions either side of the stairwell. We have a new workshop area shown in the pink colour. That's um, so that Crenswick can actually have on-site engineering capability rather than having to call people in. And in terms of operational efficiency, that makes perfect sense to have the team on site because if any part of the machinery is down, even for a short while, it does have an impact on their ability to process the chickens. So from an employment point of view, that is uh, engineering jobs that we would endorse, but it's also good from an uh, operational perspective. We also have uh, additional production air office areas, very thin strip. We have a new entrance feature. Also, part of the reason for extensions is because Crenswick have been fortunate in that one of their latest um, customers has asked for fresh chicken that has been marinated. And what they have done is provide a new marinating area within the plant so that fresh chicken can be flavoured, ready to be sent to, to customers. So that in itself does not result in an increase in capacity or throughput of chickens, but it does enable Crenswick to widen their offer to potential customers. There is nothing within the extensions that has increased the throughput of chickens. These are all added facilities to make the factory more effective and the operational aspects easier. So here we have a view looking towards the A140, which is at the back of the slide. And I'll just run through the extensions. You can see <coughs> extension one, very modest. Extension two, you can't really notice either side of the staircase. That's extension three, four, five. I'll show you separately, that's the entrance building. Six is a tiny corner extension and seven is a thin strip on the edge of the building but in terms of the entrance it isn't that color but the area shaded blue is a new entrance feature you'll notice the car park in the foreground so extension one merely allows uh, improved cleaning facilities and you can imagine in a chicken processing plant cleaning and hygiene is of the utmost importance. Very modest extensions around the stairwells again to provide additional hygiene facilities and additional staircase maneuvering room. Extension three is the marinade, oh, that's the maintenance workshop and you'll notice that there are actual workshops in there that's where parts will be replaced repaired and and other bits and pieces go on in terms of routine maintenance the plant already has a marinade room but because of the um, requirements of the new customer that has been extended slightly to give them more room The actual entrance extension doesn't fill the whole space. The actual glass frontage is set back behind or under a canopy. So the extension isn't as big as the plan suggests. And that provides rain cover at the entrance. A driver's restroom, you can imagine that uh, drivers of the, the chicken lorries need somewhere to rest up between trips. That is now provided. And there's a plant room extension, again a modest strip on the edge of the building. In terms of car parking, what we have is I think it's an increase of seven overall. 
but I've marked on the screen the actual numbers so you can see between the large car park, excuse me a moment while I just... The large surface car park remains and what we have are a number of extended spaces at the entrance to the site. So I can confirm categorically that there is no increase, that's no decrease in the number of parking spaces. Whilst some of the existing parking spaces have been taken up with extensions, the applicants have been very careful to re-provide and extend parking spaces across the site. So I think some local people may have been concerned when they saw parts of the extensions sitting on the car park. But we have ensured that the number of spaces has increased. So there you have the previously approved parking and you'll notice that there wasn't the extra spaces to the right of that near the entrance. We seem to have lost all functionality for a second. Here we go. So that's now the extra parking. I'll just flat so you can see. <coughs> Excuse me. In terms of video, we have a very short section of video so that you can just see the plant in the context of the A140, hopefully. You see the uh, turbines, you see bits of industry in the background, and then you have the processing plant itself. Most of those extensions you wouldn't even recognise from that vantage point, and that is the public vantage point from the A140. There isn't a path there you would be driving. In terms of the catchment for the processing plant, I do need to describe how Cranswick operate their, their business. And what they have is a series of... They only accept chickens from farms that they own, they only accept chickens from within a 40 mile radius. And the advantage with this location compared to their existing location in Weybred is that it sits right on top of a strategic highway network. So lorries can come and go via the A14 and the A140, whereas previously lorries were trundling through the countryside to get to the plant in Weybred. And that plant, I understand, actually closed at the weekend. So the Weybrid operation is no longer operational. The good news is that because the extensions have not resulted in any increase in capacity to process chickens, the number of lorry movements will not increase to and from this site as a result of the extensions. That said, of course, it is a, uh, an industrial area. We are, as a council, encouraging industrial growth. And you would that, expect that to be accompanied by an increase in traffic movements, particularly from delivery vehicles. But in the case of the Cranswick chicken processing plant, we don't expect there to be an increase in traffic. In terms of residential amenity, the nearest houses are on the west side of the A140. As hopefully I could demonstrate from the video, you wouldn't notice the extensions from the A140, let alone the houses on the west side of the A140 in Yaxley. So in terms of the extensions you see on the screen, we are satisfied that there is no adverse residential amenity impact. And on this screen, I just highlight the distances to nearest residential properties. So we've got 319 metres to the closest, and then to the bottom end of Yaxley, it's 600 and, I think that's this, 53 metres. And remember, we're talking about relatively narrow extensions on a previously approved factory building. To show you the complexity of the building, that is simply a diagram of the steelwork within the building. There is the frame under construction, and that contract went to a local steel fabricator. 
on the screen, what you have, there's a series of slides that show as built at the top compared to as approved. And I think you would probably be hard pressed to spot a difference other than the obvious one in terms of the relocation of the entrance feature and additional glazing. In terms of side views, again, very difficult to spot much of a, a difference. And you'll be comforted, hopefully, by the fact that when we looked at each of the extensions in turn, they weren't particularly big compared to the overall mass of the approved building. What I've done here is I've simply superimposed the as approved, which is the bottom image, on top of the as built. And we should just see that there is a difference in profile. At the highest point, at the ridge point, that's 1.2 metres. In my view, that isn't uh, significant. You wouldn't spot that from the distances that we have in terms of public viewing points. And it is part of the extension works. It is part of the additional windows to the elevations. I think, for the better, the palette of materials has been extended to break up the monotony, I would have suggested, or the, the mass of the building. So now we have a combination of Merlin grey, goosewing grey. The original bright yellow, saffron yellow, has been replaced by a dahlia yellow, which is slightly softer and, and warmer. We have white elements and colours of natural concrete, and I think the contrasts now help to disguise the mass of the building much better than the originally approved materials. As part of the uh, construction work, I think it is worth recognising that the Silum waterworks have already been extended by nearly a £2 million, pound, nearly £2 million pound extension, not only to provide additional water to this facility, but also to provide water to I in terms of any extensions that may occur in I in terms of residential development. That capacity has now been increased as a result of this development. Cranswick themselves have invested £75 million in, in the new chicken processing plant. You're all aware, very aware of the nature of employment in Suffolk res. Having only worked for the council for 18 months, I needed to refresh my memory. And it is quite clear that agricultural activity is unusually high in Suffolk in terms of the importance to the local economy. As you can see, it outstrips that of not just the east of England, but also England. And there is no doubt that this world-beating uh, processing plant, the newest in Europe, uh, the most efficient, will assist agriculture in Suffolk. What I've done on this slide is simply include some shots of the Progress Power Plant, the gas plant, that's to be located at the northern end of the airfield, just to give you an idea of scale of development within the, air, within the airfield. And I think it's fair to say that this particular development dwarfs the Krenswick factory. So, in a nutshell, as officers, we are satisfied that the extensions will not cause an increase in traffic. It will not result in a material increase in capacity at the plant. It will not harm residential amenity. It doesn't result in a loss of car parking, but actually results in a very small increase. All in all, we are satisfied that had this proposal been submitted originally, we would have recommended approval. Thank you, Chair. Um, thank you. I think Philip was just going to add a little something there for me. Thank, thank you, yes, Chairman. Yes, you'll um, see from the report that there's mention of the um, outstanding application uh, relating to the combined heat and power system. Uh, and that's detailed on page 34 and 35 of your report. Uh, and reference to uh, the renewable energy uh, uh, proposal associated with this building. That's still the subject of ongoing discussion. Uh, so uh, 
from our perspective as officers, that's a conversation outside this room that is happening and the application is under consideration. From our point of view, uh, we're yeah. working with uh, the company to make sure we've got a scheme that is comfortable to our uh, sustainability officers uh, working, uh, working with us to uh, achieve that. That's still live and, uh, and in fairness, undecided, so um, we have to be cautious in what we as officers say, but that's in hand. I would just point out and, and clarify one thing within the report, uh, noting, as, as Vince has done for you, the um, height changes to the building. Uh, paragraph 4.1, uh, the report did say there was no increase in the previously approved building height. That is actually um, incorrect, so the, the, the drawings that you have, uh, as shown uh, on the slides, do indicate the changes of those, and obviously with a wider span of building, uh, yeah, that's that's almost inevitable to uh, uh, arrive at that point. Um, but if you've got any questions around that, uh, Chairman, happy to uh, to pick that point up further on on either matter. Thank you. Thank you for that. So, members, do you have any questions for Vince? It was a very comprehensive uh, report. There. Does anybody have any questions? Councillor Warboys, thank you. Just a couple, really. I, 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 I'd just like to say thank you. That was a really clear presentation. Um, it, it's uh, another outstanding um, element, I think, which is a lighting scheme. I just wonder whether, like the renewable energy, there have been sort of discussions about that. And the second question was with regards to the parking. Is there any sort of facility there for charging bays or bicycles? Thank you, Councillor Warboys. The lighting scheme is is a matter for discharge of condition, so that will be dealt with separately outside of this particular proposal. In terms of the parking, I, there is adequate cycle parking included within the scheme, but you make a very interesting point about the electric vehicle charging. I don't believe that the scheme includes any electric vehicle charging points and I think it would be reasonable as this is a full application were members minded to require some <coughs> EV charging points that we could add that by way of condition um, just one more little extra from uh, thank you Chairman. yes um, so uh, the original permission that's uh, in your table papers the, the late papers you'll see the decision notice there and just so we're clear, there was a lighting, uh, lighting, lighting design scheme required as condition 22, uh, and indeed condition 20 related to cycle parking. Um, I, I think in fairness, what, uh, what, uh, what you have in condition 20 on, on page 10 of those table papers is our usual and traditional cycle parking condition, which predates the invention of the electric bicycle. <laughs> um, it's not to say that planners are at the forefront of uh, transport change, but we could uh, happily include within that uh, provision for uh, charging for electric bicycles as a, as, a, as a matter to be picked up. As you'll see on page 37, we are proposing the reproduction of these conditions, uh, and I'm happy to suggest that we include uh, provision for charging electric bicycles within uh, that uh, proposal as a way of dealing with it. As regards lighting, I don't believe, and forgive me, I don't believe I've seen uh, a detailed submission on that at this point in time. Uh, as the building is not yet complete, I suspect that's uh, a, a little, uh, little early, but um, from my point of view, uh, we are expecting that and uh, we will be looking at that. This is a matter, obviously, we're already into the question of an enforcement investigation regarding the retrospective nature of the development, so uh, I'm fairly comfortable from my point of view that Cranswick understand their responsibilities under these conditions and uh, uh, will look to deal with both lighting and the renewable energy condition in a reasonable manner with us, but I uh, have to pursue that if members Mr. have Isabel, any questions. Can I just ask, in terms of electric charging, I think Councillor Warboys was also asking cars. for vehicle cars yeah. as well in the car ah, park. Um, it's not something that we've done previously. I think uh, in practical terms there's a, there's a sense okay. to that and that's worth, worthwhile us taking away to uh, include that as a scheme within the provision of parking and turning on this, uh, which is condition 19 as listed. So I think we can do both bicycles and cars. Sorry, I took, yeah, took okay. a steer and went in one direction, apologies. I must admit, I thought that was the glass half full or half empty because I was thinking the same as you as cars and it was a very interesting thought about electric bikes actually. So uh, so we, we've got a double whammy on that one. Yeah, thank you. Um,
Yes, Councillor Byrne. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to ask Vincent, please. Um, he mentioned in his, uh, or you mentioned in your presentation that uh, the uh, progress power um, gas, uh, gas fired pro, um, power station, which does have an extent uh, development consent order uh, on the airfield. Uh, your presentation suggested uh, that it was going to go ahead in, in the sense that you didn't say it was a, a proposal and not a, com uh, not a completed one. Um, have you any information that I don't have which suggests that it is indeed going to go ahead? Thank you. I do have another question after this one, please. Yeah, can you stick to this planning application as well? <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, no, no, we don't have any information that will go, go ahead. It has been the subject of a nationally uh, significant infrastructure project application and has a development consent order. Uh, I think it's fair to say the question of uh, the, uh, the, the funding to make that happen has not yet been settled, so at the moment it remains a scheme, but it has a consent. And so from our point of view, as part of the planning context on the airfield, it's a relevant decision, albeit clearly, and if you go back to your site layout plan, Vince, that would be really helpful. Uh, it, it, it will appear in the, the further distance of the airfield together with the existing power station uh, on, on the airfield. So um, if I wait while my um, glamorous assistant finds the relevant plan. Um, the, the point is there is a consent from our perspective and the Secretary of State has given consideration to the landscape context of uh, our airfield and as one small feature of that uh, there is there is a development consent order for uh, a gas-fired power station uh, further to the north. If you go back to that previous slide that you had, Vince, that will do our purpose. If you go back one, or forward one, shall we say? So where you were, next one. So in this, the northernmost yellow blob, if I can put it like that, oh, that excellent, in, in the northernmost part of that has uh, been the subject of uh, this NSIP, NSIP consent order. Uh, and obviously that will appear in, in the distance compared to where the site we're dealing with from the uh, Carston Way area, but as part of the visual quality of uh, I airfield and in consistency with the original landscape advice as uh, quoted in the report, you know, there is already uh, a range of industrial and utilitarian structures on the airfield which all provide context to which this is completely consistent. Uh, I hope that kind of deals with it, Councillor Byrne, in a way that provides the uncertainty you were hoping for. Your next question, please, Councillor Byrne. Thank you. Yes, the, um, the, the lighting scheme, which is the subject of the discharge uh, of condition, um, I, I'd like to know whether if uh, that, some of that lighting scheme has already been implemented, can you have a retrospective discharge of condition, uh, or, or would the actual... Uh, completion of a lighting scheme or partial completion of a lighting scheme that has not yet been discharged require a further uh, retrospective planning application. Um, uh, specifically, I'm talking about the lighting scheme uh, that illuminates the car parking area. Thank you. So if, perhaps if I pick that issue up, on page 10 of the late papers, uh, the lighting scheme, a, design, a lighting design, design scheme including details of lights proposed on buildings for security purposes and for lighting of the external circulation areas is the requirement that was set out. Uh, that is required prior to occupation and the building isn't occupied, it's still under construction. So uh, in, in first principles, we're not yet at the point where uh, that is uh, uh, essential, so we're not into a retrospective element there. Secondly, it is perfectly possible to seek uh, approval for that in a retrospective way. Um, we would deal with that as a common sense submission. Uh, were the enforcement team to investigate that, uh, the usual approach would be to politely and firmly invite the necessary application to discharge the condition at the earliest opportunity and then to engage in dialogue about that. So from our point of view, much as you can have a retrospective application for uh, uh, planning permission, uh, you can also apply in retrospect to discharge a condition. It would seem um, unhelpful not to be able to do that. Uh, and from our point of view, we are aware that uh, the Humphreys development to the north is 
visually noticeable at night, shall we say. Uh, and this uh, site will be no less so. Inevitably, with a uh, building and layout such as this, it is unavoidable that you will see some, uh, some lighting impacts in the night sky, but minimising those uh, and shielding lights such that uh, there is as little spill as possible uh, is part of our objective. Uh, and, and so from our point of view, we are focused on making sure that we achieve that result, Councillor. Any further questions? No? Well, we don't have anyone from the parish council or an objector or a supporter, but we have David Park, the applicant or the agent, if you'd like to come forward, please. Is that okay? Yeah. Right. Uh, good morning, members. Uh, thank you for seeing us this morning. Uh, my name is David Park. I'm a director of Cranswick. Um, the reason for the planning applications that we put forward today, uh, coming uh, retrospectively, is that our building has evolved uh, as we have been uh, as we've been uh, executing the build. That's um, largely due to the fact that. When we started building, uh, we had a forecasted sales profile for our throughput, um, and that uh, crystallized into being a actual um, um, sales profile as a result of gaining uh, a new customer for the, uh, for the majority of the throughput of the factory. So um, it's been fairly widely publicized that we've uh, um, agreed a supply agreement with um, Morrison Supermarket Group to supply uh, in excess of 80% of their fresh poultry requirement, fresh chicken requirement. Um, and that has led to the fact that um, they require um, most of their throughput, most of their uh, product to be in a cut-up format in a retail pack. Whereas uh, when we first put the application in, uh, we thought that uh, we were probably going to process about 50% of the product as, uh, as whole bird um, product. And that's meant that we've had to put a lot more equipment within the footprint of the, of, of the building um, and we're having to further process, add value to um, uh, most of the capacity of the plant. So we're not actually producing any more product, uh, but we will be um, we will be adding value and further processing uh, that throughput. Okay, so that, that's the main reason for having to put on extensions to the building. Um, a couple of other ones uh, that, that are worthy of, of, of note are the fact that uh, when, we, um, uh, when we designed things like the uh, intake bays, um, we uh, were using a European uh, vehicle uh, measurements and we uh, um, we had to amend those for, for UK uh, vehicles um, so that that pretty much covers the reasons now just to uh, just on the questions that were brought up as far as electric charging is concerned we do have provision for electric charging for cars and for bikes within the car park um, and as far as the uh, external lighting is concerned uh, that um, planning condition is signed off already. Okay. Um, so I'm available for questions, as is uh, Ian Trundley, my architect, uh, if you have any questions for us. I'm not sure, is it, do we do that now or do we do that? Sorry, I, I, I was distracted. What, what do you want to know? Because I as can't as, quite as, hear you very well. As, sorry, as far as questions are concerned, yes, I'm, I'll take, I'm, I'm we'll available take questions and now. Ian Trundley, my architect, is available as well. Yeah. Um, well, I, we will go to questions to you, yes. Okay. Um, I'm sure all of us received the letter uh, from your good self, and we welcome the investment in Mid Suffolk District Council area. I mean, it's, it's hugely important. However, um, your letter at the bottom says, uh, telling us all, you know, everything you told us in the letter, which was why you know what you are and what you do and everything, 
It says, meanwhile, I hope that my letter has helped clarify the position as to why we're in an enforcement situation or, or a retrospective application. You've told us the reason as to why you need it, but you haven't told us the reason as to why you did it without planning permission. Um, I suppose uh, uh, with a project of this size, it's, it's difficult to get the design right um, uh, immediately. We put, uh, we've probably been planning the, uh, the site for three years. Um, and even now, there are things that we would have done differently with the benefit of hindsight. Now, as you're, uh, you can imagine, as we're building something of that scale, having never built one before, and, and there having been no new p primary processing plants built in the last 30 years in the UK, uh, things, are going, things are going to come out of the woodwork that you know, we should have designed in the first place. Okay. If we were designing it now, if we were rebuilding it, obviously we wouldn't have to. We, we wouldn't have to need the benefit of hindsight. Can I, can I cut you off there? I appreciate that. I mean, I've built a house, and I know I wished I'd done things differently. But why didn't you apply for planning permission? You'd applied for a huge planning permission. We want it. We love it. But why didn't you go on all these other things? That's all I want to know the answer to. Time, I suppose. Time is our biggest, is our biggest, was our biggest problem. So Morrison's need the product now, and we're already, we're already uh, being put under pressure by the customer to, to, to deliver product. Um, without going into too much detail, they, uh, there was a move from the, the biggest supermarket group in the UK, uh, moved supply into Morrison's existing supplier, um, and they gave notice to Morrisons that they weren't going to supply anymore. Okay, so Morrisons were in a were in a situation where they were going to be they were going to be short of, short of product or, or even you know no product on the shelves. So they needed us to fill that gap. Okay, so therefore we had to we had to build our factory and get it ready uh, for final quarter of this year in order to make sure that they got chicken on the shelves. Now, had we not done that, had we not been able to give assurances that we would be able to do that. Then they wouldn't have given us the they wouldn't have given us the contract. I hear what you're saying on that, um, and and it's very interesting that you've got such an excellent contract, uh, which we commend you. But uh, planning is planning, and that's what we're here today for. Thank you. Um, does that, yes, Councillor Humphreys. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, yeah, I congratulate you on your contract. I think it's fantastic. It's great for Mid Suffolk. It's great for employment and everything else. My question is this though, and. and I've got a small business, not on the scale of yours, but I do deal with tenders, I deal with contracts, uh, I deal with changing those contracts, the evolution of them uh, on a daily basis. Um, but the thing I do actually, when there's a change to the contract or a change to the customer requirement, first thing I start doing is communicating. I communicate with suppliers, I communicate with venues. Why don't you communicate with the planning? I mean, it, to say it's hindsight, we do it differently, we, and, and it's full of apologies, you let, it's fantastic. But the point is this, why didn't you communicate? Um, again, in hindsight, we probably should have communicated more so. Um, and uh, I apologise for that. And that's probably an oversight um, on, on, on ultimately my behalf and, and certainly my team. And it's something that I will take back to them. Councillor Gould, thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a um, point about the vehicles. You, you, you referred to a different size of vehicle. Um, uh, are, are those vehicles larger then than the, the ones you were planning for, hence the need for the extensions? No, not larger. They're, they're exactly the same size as the vehicles that, uh, that we use uh, currently. The, um, the, the, the mistake was made because we started with a template that was provided by the uh, equipment suppliers. So the factory is, uh, the, the equipment in the factory, is a, it's a turnkey facility within the building, okay, provided by a company called Morel. And they are uh, Icelandic uh, owned, uh, but they operate in, uh, across the world. Their template was designed on a European building. If you, if, um, if, if you wanted to go back to the uh, plan of the building, the, um, uh, the Lairage area, uh, where the delivery vehicles um, 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 disembark, there are four antechambers, okay? And um, 
each one of those antechambers has to hold a vehicle and we have an interlocking door system and that's around the making sure that we control odour and making sure that we control uh, welfare. Okay? Um, and because we were working on a European sized vehicle, we were only a few centimetres, um, but when you times that by four, okay, it becomes, a, um, it becomes significant um, in order to get the health and safety clearance around the antechambers, we had to make the fourth antechamber uh, slightly longer. So no, no, exactly the same vehicles. Any further? Yes, Councillor Mayor. We've, we've heard that there is a need to change as your plans have evolved over the last um, few years. Uh, there's also, from our perspective, um, things have changed as well. Since you had planning permission, we've declared a climate change emergency. You're asking for our flexibility, our commitment. Um, can we ex expect your commitment to the renewable energy provisions and sustainability of the site going forward? Uh, absolutely, yes. I mean, I don't know if you know much about Cranswick, but we are... Um, our stated aim is to become the most sustainable uh, meat business in the world. Okay, we've got a huge project, uh, ongoing project um, of change that's going through the business at the moment, um, where we are um, uh, questioning every part of our environmental credentials. Now, as far as the eye site is concerned, we are moving, uh, we are moving our, our, our business from a, a hugely unsustainable site in uh, Waybread um, over to I, uh, the changes and the, um, uh, the sustainability features of the new site are, uh, you know, um, far, far better than, than, than the Waybread business. Now, um, um, one, one thing that I would draw you to is the CHP um, system that we're putting in. This is a tried and tested technology that we've got some of our other factories. So we're putting combined heat and power system in. Uh, which will provide all of the electricity and all of the heating and all of the hot water uh, for the plant. Um, far, far more efficient than, uh, uh, will be far more efficient and far more sustainable than any other poultry uh, facility in the UK, for, for, for absolute definite. And we'd be quite happy to show you around the factory and, and show you our commitment to that, uh, as well as uh, bring you up to speed with our second nature project, which I, which I talked about a minute ago. Um, so, yes, I'm quite comfortable with that. Thank you. Councillor Matheson. Thank you. Yeah, um, I, I, I've actually been uh, lo lobbied, I think, three times actually this year by people concerned about um, additional uh, new um, poultry um, sheds around the district. Um, can you tell us the, what's the capacity of this plant compared to the old factory uh, in in I, which uh, which I declare an interest, I worked there 30 years ago. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, uh, the existing plant at Waybread has a capacity of about 550,000 units per week. Okay. Um, however, we are actually producing around 800,000 units a week, 800,000 birds a week, and we're selling some birds live to other processors. No, we, we are producing 800,000 now, okay? Um, but, but sorry, sorry. No, no, we have, uh, I'll explain, sorry. We're totally vertically integrated, okay? So we, we produce, we, we farm our own birds, okay? And, and we process them. We have farming capacity and capability at the moment for 800,000, but we're only slaughtering and processing 550,000 at our Waybread site. The new I site will be capable of processing somewhere between 1 and 1.2 million birds per week. Okay? Um, so the, we will have a requirement for another, another two to 400,000 birds per week. Now that requirement uh, is, already, um, is already factored into our plans and we already have enough agriculture within our, existing, uh, within our existing estate and committed um, um, by, uh, by other um, um, farmers. Okay, and the, the 400,000 that we're not producing at the moment is largely going to come from 
um, a farming group who are currently providing for another processor. So, as, and, and we, we put a presentation to uh, the planners um, uh, d d explaining uh, where our agriculture is coming from and what new agriculture uh, we require. And actually, we don't, those, a lot of those planning applications are nothing to do with us. Can I just stop the debate there at the moment, because it's not really meant to be a debate. Um, it's what we're looking at today is what uh, the planning application is, and that today's um, information, okay. it's not an increase on the production of birds. It's very interesting, because I'm sure that you can come and tell us about that at a later quite time. To, quite happy to share um, the Capacity, use, uh, according to the planner, if I'm correct, is as is. Is that correct? Yes. The plant, as approved and as built, was built and is set up to deal with the amount of birds, 1.2 million that Mr Park mentioned. There is no increase. But the important point, if I may, Chair, oh, I think Councillor Matheson is commenting on a general perception or a general fear across North Mid-Suffolk that there could be an increase in uh, transportation related to chicken processing plants because we are the capital of the chicken production world in the UK and I think what Mr Park is saying this application has nothing to do with other plants there may be other farmers who want to increase their capacity but they will not be going to Cranswick's plant in I. those farmers have arrangements with other processing plants and Cranswick can't be held accountable for what other farmers may be doing in Norfolk Suffolk and the area I think is where that answer goes I think could, that's very helpful from everybody, but no more debate on the point. I think we've cleared it. Thank if, you. If, if I could just make a point on uh, oh. vehicle movements, though. Vehicle movements coming in. Um, the vehicles, the, the new system that we are using to transport birds is, allows us to get 35% more um, uh, weight birds on a vehicle. Um, which makes us far more efficient than we currently are and more efficient than any other sites in the UK. Not only that, the location of the new site, uh, to Vince's point, the fact that we're on their 140, A14, 143 um, intersections means that we're not, um, we are not tra travelling our birds uh, but Can I cut you down further. because you're entering a debate and this should just be questions and quick okay. answers and we've, got, we've had enough on that. We can debate ourselves. You've okay. been most helpful with the information. Right, thank you. Have we got any further questions as a quick question and answer? No? Thank you very much indeed. I'm sure we will be seeing you again on other applications. Thank you very much. Right, we have the ward member now. Councillor Byrne, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm not going to take exception to anything, uh, or very few things, <laughs> that have been said today uh, by the um, uh, case officer or the presenting officer or, or, or the applicant. Um, I think that the pr process has been followed very rigorously and very properly. Um, I'm satisfied with that most of the impacts um, that Vince uh, highlighted for us uh, have been satisfactorily answered. The only thing I would like to bring to the uh, committee's attention is perhaps the visual amenity. You now I've got a positive and a negative on the visual amenity side. Uh, the positive first, um, the, the uh, changes that have been made to the southern elevation, uh, which is the one that you see from Castleton Way, Castleton Way being the road that runs from the A140 at the south of the airfield through to I, um, from Castleton Way you see the southern elevation. And um, the actual uh, alterations that have been made to that elevation uh, create um, jutting out pieces, if I can put it that way, per, uh, that, that actually break up the visual line. Instead of the whole face of the building being uh, completely flat for its entire um, enormous length, 
it is uh, actually punctuated by differences in depth, which I think, and that coupled with the variation in colour and the added palette, the added colours of grey, white, etc., to the palette, um, does actually improve the visual impact of it. There's no getting away from the fact that there is a very large building there, um, but uh, it, it, it is visually m more uh, easy on the eye because of the actual um, uh, alterations that have been made. Um, the one that I would uh, uh, take uh, to suggest is, is, is a negative, has negative impact, and that is the, um, the canopy um, or the, uh, the entrance foyer at the front of the building, which is significantly longer than the original one uh, and, and seems to be even longer because I think the, the western extremity of the main building has been moved slightly eastwards. So it gives the impression that that whole canopy with its um, office space within at least half of it uh, has, has, uh, has been extended quite considerably. Now added to that fact, uh, added to that is, is the fact that it is this bright chrome yellow, which is, I've no, I've, I've no problem with chrome yellow as a colour, uh, but it does make that particular part of the building stand out very considerably. Now it's okay, it is a commercial building, or one does need to draw attention to it. Um, but the view that you saw of that uh, canopy there is a fully western, that's, that's a fully western view. And the fact is that the cars that move up and down the A140, uh, and there aren't many pedestrians at that point anyway, so we're talking about vehicular traffic. Um, the, uh, that view is only in sight for a very short period of time. Uh, and m more, more of a view is the oblique view from the north and from the south, where this particular canopy is very much more obtrusive than it is there. Now, in that respect, and probably in that respect only, I would say that the visual amenity of this building is, um, it, it, it doesn't get a, a plus point from me on that score, but on that score alone. Well, apart from that, Chairman, I don't think I've got any comment to make on this application further. Thank you very much, Councillor. Um, does anyone have any questions for the ward member? No? Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Then in that case, we'll go into debate. Thank you. Who'd like to start us off? Councillor Humphreys, go for it. I thought I'd wait and be polite, but um, as nobody's jumping in, I'll, I'll start this off. Um, uh, as explained to Mr Park, all are disappointing um, that this has come forward as a retrospective uh, permission or, um, yeah, for retrospective permissions. Um, I have to go back to the first slide, really, that the officer showed, and it was about the, the effects on the immunity. And, you know, I can't see that there's any adverse or additional adverse eff um, effects that this um, extension, effectively, or extensions, brings to this plan. Um, it's pretty much the same. Most of it you can't see. And, and it's all being done for the right reasons, isn't it? We need employment. You've got a new contract. You have to, um, you have to amend your plan. You have to do that, otherwise you'd have lost this contract, uh, which has been um, bad for you and bad for us as a, as a county. So I understand the reasons you did it, and I understand the pace of business. Um, however, as I said before, it would have helped if you'd have actually communicated it at an earlier stage. You might have got a little bit more buy-in, a bit more assistance, and I think that's perhaps a thing for the future. Because it's true, isn't it, if everybody went around getting re retrospective planning permissions, um, it would basically make this completely pointless, and actually we'd have chaos within the community. So I think the same applies to you as it does to a householder, to a developer. Um, stick with the plan and, uh, and communicate it when it changes as early as you can. Having said all of that, um, these changes, in my mind, do not cause any change to the amenity. Uh, they benefit the company, they benefit the district, they benefit our employees. And overall, I think it's a fairly good plan, actually, uh, for such a large industrial site. 
on the right place. And therefore, I'm going to jump straight in. I would like to propose approval of the recommendation and the conditions set. And did you want the conditions with the electric, the added, the little electric um, for the bicycles? And Madam Chair, I think that's already in. Um, well, Mr. Parks already explained that we've already yeah, got electrical he's got charging. Them in. Yeah, um, I don't think for we need bicycles additional. as well. Were they? Yeah. Uh, Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor. But just for clarity, I mean, I, I, I understand um, that, that's Cranswick's direction of travel. But from our point of view, in confidence that these are, these are embodied in the decision, we'd expect to include them. So, I, I, I and for, apologies for lack of clarity. I had intended that officers were amending their recommendation to em, embrace those as sensible uh, sensible points anyway during the uh, earlier part of the conversation. Are you happy with that, Councillor? Madam Chair, sorry. Yes, I, I accept that. That's fine. Right, who else would like to speak? Councillor Gould, thank you. Uh, not, not to take any of the committee's time, just to uh, uh, second uh, what Councillor Humphreys uh, had, has said and uh, uh, endorse absolutely what he's had to say about the shame that uh, this is being dealt with in a way that, that it has. I see nothing that would have uh, uh, led the applicant to believe that this would be a, a difficult process uh, we are all wholly supportive of the, th the building itself is not a thing of beauty, never will be, but the beauty lies in the economic benefit uh, to the area. So I'd like to uh, second the proposal. Thank you for that, Councillor. Uh, you might think I was rude by um, having my mobile phone on, but um, I actually am rather sad. I go around the country taking pictures of uh, developments, and there is a fantastic one at Milton Keynes, and they've done a very clever design on the colours, that they've actually done dark blue at the bottom, and then they bring lines of blue coming up to the top, putting white at the top. Now, they've tried to do that on the A14 near Woolpit, and they've put green on the bottom, so it didn't quite work. Um, but this is something that blends into the big skies we've got in Suffolk, so maybe in the future, um, the yellow banana that they've got there might be blended down when they refresh. Just a thought. But we've got a proposer and a seconder. Anyone else wishing to speak without labouring the point? I think we've all done jolly well. Councillor Matheson? Yes, just, just to say that I think that I, uh, the most notable point about all, all, all this is that the, 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 um, the, the Mr Isabel has, has exercised a little discretion in bringing it to committee because as it was less than 10 per cent um, additional floor area anyway, um, it might almost have been g gone through as uh, um, um, you know, non-material, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it was right to bring it here uh, and, and it was right to, to explain to the applicant that we do take um, a dim view of, of um, large numbers of retrospective applications, which there seem to be rather a lot of lined up on this site. Thank you for that. In that case, I have a proposer and a seconder. Can all of us vote? Those in favour, please, please vote. And we are unanimous. Thank you very much indeed. Um, can we move on to the next one, please? This comes as no surprise that Vince will be presenting this case as well, please. Page 59. Thank you, Chair. Uh, another application at the chicken processing plant in Yaxley. I will skip through a number of these because you will have seen the slides previously. What we're looking at is a relocation of the aeration tank, as I've outlined in royal blue and the building that goes with it has been enlarged. What we're not looking at are any of the additional tanks that you can see on site that are included within the red area. They are subject of another application that I identified on the previous application that we're currently looking at. So we are purely restricting ourselves to the area in royal blue. 
You'll notice from the plan on the right, previously we approved an aeration tank and an associated building. It has been built in a slightly different position. The associated building is slightly larger in terms of the footprint. There is an, uh, uh, an aerial stairway to the top of the aeration tank. On the drawing on the screen, that is shown on the right hand side of the circle. Let's see if we can. Am I able to? We're running out of desk. Here we go. There is the staircase nine. In this shot, the blue circle is the tank that we're looking at, the aeration tank. The yellow circle and the red circle are not matters before you this morning. They're subject of other applications. The aeration tank is broadly the same size as previously proposed. It has now moved closer to the processing plant, which in many ways is a good thing because you read it against the backdrop of the existing plant. The actual processing building is much as previously approved, slightly larger footprint, but the, the access to the top of the aeration tank, rather than being a long raking ramp, is now a series of dog leg. It's reduced the visual impact of that structure simply by incorporating these dog legs. And that is the only matter that you're being asked to look at this morning. We're perfectly satisfied that that is I would have said almost a non-material amendment, but as it's part of a package and a suite of Section 73 applications, we have brought it before you. We are recommending approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for that. Are there any questions, Councillor Carter? This is just an apology for the spasms at the moment. I appear to be of a bit of a breeze behind my head. Is, is there any problems if I put my hat on to stop? Please do, yeah. Councillor. Yeah. Please do. Thank you. Sorry about that. Would you like to move somewhere else to sit somewhere else? It might be less drafty. Maybe a bit later. Unless I can't do it. Sorry. No, no, no. Make yourself comfortable. And if you need to go out, put your hand up and we'll get some help for you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Let, let's take a little break now to get some comfort for one of our councillors there. Just a um, ten minute break for a quick coffee, please.
Refresh, thank you very much indeed. So we can resume. Um, and we got to the point, I think, were there any questions for the officer? I think that was it, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, any questions then? No? Right. In that case, we have Mr. David Park again. If you'd like to come forward, if you want three minutes, uh, you're very welcome. Please come and... You, you've said all that you need to say. Um, can I just ask members, are there any questions relating to this item for the applicant at all? No? Right. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Um, then we have Councillor Byrne again. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, Yes, these, uh, these variations to the original uh, seem uh, even more minor than the, um, than the previous ones were. And um, to that extent, I have no real ob objections to them. Um, the retrospective applications, we've heard how uh, strongly they are disliked. They are disliked particularly by our residents, and um, as I am ward member and a, a member, a, a, a resident myself of, of Yaxley Village, uh, you can imagine just how resentful um, my fellow residents are of all these retrospective applications. Um, being asked to accommodate uh, such a large development on the doorstep without any um, observable recompense directly to the village, uh, that's fine. Uh, none was expected, but some of the residents do. Uh, it's even, even worse when uh, the observation is made that, you know, the larger the applicant, um, the, more, uh, the more they try to uh, abuse the system, if you like to call it that. I'm not suggesting that and there's been any abuse in this particular case, but that is the perception. Um, one thing I will say about this application, I noticed it in some of the uh, drawings, that uh, even drawings submitted with uh, the application uh, differ one against the, one against the other. Um, the position of the staircase or external access ladders or whatever you like to call them on, uh, on one drawing that's submitted with this is different to that on another um, and there are other differences too. I mean it sort of highlights the fact that there have been so many changes to this application that the, applicant, uh, themse the applicants themselves uh, have been unable to keep pace with them to the point where they submit uh, consistent drawings with the same application. Now, uh, this probably wouldn't have happened had th there been contact, uh, uh, continuous contact with the planners as and when these, div these changes were, were, were being introduced uh, for very good reason, and I accept the good reasons. Um, but that that contact, as we've already heard, uh, has not taken place, and I think it is an object lesson for all concerned. I mean, I, I, I have to say that I noticed that some of the variations in the, in the building uh, occurred at least six months before uh, our case officer was aware of them, um, in which case, you know, th th there is something uh, remiss in, in all of that. However, as I say, in planning terms, um, I cannot see that the changes in respect of this particular aeration and denitrification or whatever it is, uh, tank, and the associated building um, warrant uh, uh, objection to the point of, of a refusal, but uh, uh, that's not my decision, it's yours. Thank you for that, Councillor. I just have a question. Was there any engagement at, right at the beginning with the um, local residents of your village and parish? Was there? Um, 
Yes, indeed, there was. Uh, there That's was. all right. Though. Yes, yeah. we did yeah. have we did have visitations from uh, visitations. visitations, flying really. chickens. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank you for your help on that one. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions for the ward member? No? I, th I think that's all very helpful. Um, in which case, um, we move on to debate. Who wants to go for that one? Councillor Matheson. Yeah, I think, I think this one is extremely straightforward and, and um, that I shall propose um, approval in, uh, as per recommended uh, without delay. Thank you, Councillor. And Councillor Carter? And I'll second that as well. Thank you for that. It's our proposal and a seconder. Does anyone wish to speak at all or can we go straight to the vote? In that case, may we go to the vote, please? All those in favour? And we are unanimous. Thank you very much indeed and thank you very much, everybody. So, we now move on to the final item of the day. Page 87, and Massa will present this case for us, please. Sorry, Councillor, are you? Ah, oh, you're our ward member. Silly me. Massa, if you'd like to present the case, thank you very much. Hello everyone. Yes, thank you. Um, this is a submission of reserve matters uh, following um, an approval of outline at appeal. Uh, Baber and Mitsofi refused the outline initially in 2013. Um, the applicant appealed against the decision. Uh, there was a hearing, public hearing, and it took a long time. And finally, in 2016, it was allowed at appeal. Um, so this reserve matters application is following to that. This is the site. Um, as you can see, it's to the edge of Needham Market, um, northwest of Needham Market. It's away from the historic core and the conservation area. Um, and you can see also um, some of the cul-de-sacs that are adjacent to the site and as you will note there are different densities but they are predominantly um, of high densities. To the southeast of the site is Anderson Close and to the north northeast of the site is Meadow View. I'll explain further in the following slides. Oh gosh I went too fast sorry. Um, as you can see, this is a constraint map. Um, there is Grade 2 Hill House to the northeast of the site, but it's reasonably away from the site, so um, Heritage team identified negligible impact upon the uh, setting and um, character of the Grade 2 listed building. There are also a number of TPOs, as you can see, those green dots, and there are a number of um, group TPOs, again, further away from the site, uh, which will further reduce any adverse impact upon those um, as a result of the proposal. Um, as you can see, the blue ribbons show the floodplains, again, comfortably away from the development. Um, this is the area of photography of the site. It shows uh, the context of the site within the wider setting. Also shows some landscape characteristics of the site and um, neighbouring developments surrounding the site. This is again a similar image, uh, aerial photography. It shows that the site is neither isolated or disconnected from the uh, settlement in Needham Market. This is the red line boundary. So this is the proposed layout um, of the development. Um, the layout compromises 37 dwellings, um, accessed by a single point of Hill House Lane. The density is 24 per hectare. 
this was determined at appeal and is one of the conditions of the inspectorate. Uh, mix of detached, semi-detached and small terrace of dwellings, um, the latter limited to the affordable housing element of the scheme. Housing mix compromises of two, one bed, 10 two bed, um, 19 three beds and six four bed dwellings. Vehicle accommodation compromises integral and detached garaging with affordable housing, uh, houses provided with unenclosed on-site car spaces. All of the dwellings are two stories um, apart from two singular story dwellings. Again, a key has been provided. So uh, the two bungalows are situated to the edge of the development to the um, southwest of the site. They are pink, I believe. 13 affordable housing, which compromises of 35% of the whole of the development are clustered to the north eastern corner of the site. Um, I point out to you that the orientation is not correct, but, but in the next slide I will, I will demonstrate how they sit. So the eastern here house lane hedge is retained, aside from where punctuated by the proposed main access road and five double vehicle crossings. Existing mature trees um, at the site perimeter are retained, and extensive copse areas are uh, proposed to northern and eastern site boundaries. A proposed footpath um, from, from um, I would call them internal roads within the development are proposed to Anderson Close and also to Meadowview, but I will again demonstrate in the further slides. Um, so this is the real uh, position of the site um, in connection with its neighbours, with a neighbouring cul-de-sac. As you can see, I'm um, sorry, just one moment, I'm trying how do I get the point of view? I'm sorry, I see. Okay, so um, as you can see, it's kind of a typical layout of a um, residential development of this site. Um, as you can see, there are two axes and two footpaths have been proposed. Um, one here to Meadowview, which is this development, as you can see. Um, Meadowview compromises of um, contemporary modern dwellings and um, the quite large detached dwellings in their settings. And here in Anderson Close, the density is much higher. And uh, like I said, the footpath comes here and goes to Anderson Close. These two footpaths, they offer better connectiv connectivity to the, uh, to the wider setting. Um, there's a public footpath here. And there's also a public footpath along the um, north um, east of the boundary along here as I'm pointing out to you. Um, Anderson Close slopes steeply from the bottom when you start from here, it's kind of um, steep. But as you arrive here, um, the, 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 the slope is kind of more gentle. So again, I will demonstrate to you in the further photographs that it's almost flat. Um, so it's not as intense as the slope within Anderson Close in this, in this part. So um, the applicant has provided us with illustrations of um, a typical elevation, as you can see. But in the further slide, I will connect them to how they would appear um, if you were standing in the, uh, in the layout, basically, what you would see. So as you can see, AA shows the view from that axis to the top. As you can see, uh, the, the, this, uh, the slope is quite gentle. Um, it's nothing like Anderson Close, which is, which is much, much steeper. And BB shows, uh, shows the elevation and how it would appear. And CC at the bottom is also illustration of, again, uh, typical elevation of, of the uh, proposed dwellings. I'll give you a minute to observe. Um, plant planting and landscaping has not been shown here. This is just purely to show the uh, slope and also just, just the uh, general appearance of the, of the proposed dwellings. And here is the view uh, from how he's slain. Hill has slain, sorry. And this is a soft landscaping that, that has been proposed. 
as you can see, um, if I point out to you, this part forms the shared boundary to Anderson Close. And as you can see, extensive planting has been proposed, which offers the screening and also uh, just softens the uh, built form. And to this side as well, extended landscaping has been proposed. Um, the applicant has also offered two um, woodland plantation areas, as I'm pointing out to you. This is strip here, and also this one. Again, uh, this was something that uh, was addressed by the inspectorate and I was, was dealt with at the outline stage, which helps the development to sit well in its setting and also, again, reduces any um, adverse impact upon the special landscape area. This is the view um, to the basically access to the site, entrance to the site. Um, this house is part of the uh, meadow view development. This is another, this is not a image. Um, this photo was taken uh, when the application was, um, was refused. As you can see, there is no planting. This is the top of Anderson Close. And there are no planting, there's no hedgerows or anything like that. That would kind of provide a screening and privacy for, for the occupiers in Anderson Close. However, I went on site last week and I've taken a number of photos um, and I'm going to share that with you in just shortly, just one minute, please. Thank you. Okay, so this is um, this is the site. Um, as you can see, um, the, the boundary where you can see the mature trees and hedgerows is where the public access, uh, public footpath is. This is now. If you remember the previous image I showed you, there were no hedgerows, no plantations, nothing. But at the moment, there's a mature, established. Um, hedgerows and trees being planted to the shared boundaries with Anderson Close. Again, this is another image. Um, in this photo, I wanted to demonstrate the depth of the gardens in Anderson Close. Um, these are relatively long gardens uh, with approximately 25 meters distance from the closest dwelling that has been proposed. This is the shared boundary with Anderson Close and the new development and where the new footway has been proposed, connecting Anderson Close uh, with the new development. Um, in this photo, I was hoping to demonstrate the high density of Anderson Close and how close the, the, the properties are placed um, in relation to the new development, which is a 24 per hectare, much lower density, um, than Anderson Close. Um, in this photo, I just want to show the different level, um, the gradient of, of the land. Um, but you, what you can see, the hedgerows to the top is where Hill House Lane is. Again, it just shows the land is relatively flat in comparison to Anderson Close. And here's me standing on top of Hill House Lane, um, taking the photos from there. Again, as you can see, I would like to point out that it's relatively, it's a very gentle slope in that part. And these are some of the properties in um, Meadowview. As I said, they feature some contemporary modern design and at much um, 
lower density than Anderson Close, similar to what's been proposed. Just some of the properties and also the garages, similar to what's been proposed. Um, this shows the width of um, Hill House Lane where the development has been proposed to the um, northwest of the site. There's a public footpath there and also, I'm not sure if it's evident, but to the, to the left of the picture is a sign that shows public footpath. The site is well connected. Um, the layout sits well, um, and it's mainly adhering to the indicative plan that was approved at that line. And for that reason, for those reasons, we have recommended approval. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, can you just show us on a, um, an overhead plan or, or something um, the connectivity between this proposed site and a play area? I believe. Um, the, there are some um, play areas that the is that Crowley Park that you're referring to? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, just just so that we can see how far it is away from the course. site for play equipment, because obviously it isn't on here at the moment. Um, I might have to Google. Um, okay, there it is. Yes, thank you. That yes, that's there. Thank you. Just an overhead view of Of course. Yes, if you can just point out. Okay, Crowley Park is here. Right. So, uh, and there's a public footpath here. Yeah. There's a public footpath here. And again, as I said, two uh, new footways have been proposed, again, uh, improving the connectivity of the site to the wider, wider settlement. And here is Crowley Park. Right. I guesstimate is less than half a mile away, but I can't be sure. Don't quote me on that. No. Right. Thank you for that. That was just my question so that members could see where some play area was for the community, proposed community. Right. Any questions? Councillor Humphreys. Right, Chair. Thank you. Um, just one question. You said there are two access points. Can you confirm the Anderson Close is be, uh, for vehicle access or just public footpath access? Um, there is one access to the development, one point access to the development. Uh, but two uh, public footways have been proposed as part of the development. Any further questions? Councillor Matheson, then Councillor Warboys. Thank yeah. you. Uh, the um, presumably, uh, presumably, so on the, the outline includes um, bringing the, uh, some of the uh, Hill House Lane um, farm farm track essentially. Up to, up to highway standards, does it? Uh, Chairman, yes. The, um, j just so we're all clear, the appeal decision that relates to this is in your bundle, um, and the conditions that were imposed were effectively on page 127 through to, uh, bear with me, 131. They do uh, include uh, parking and manoeuvring access arrangements, but you'll see on page mm, where are we? 136. I may take it to 136. You'll see that uh, County Council have commented that they're um, consider the details are satisfactory. They have made a couple of con suggestions regarding conditions, so they do uh, express an interest in details of the proposed access to the highway and the right of way. So there's a little further detail that they want to see, but that is conditional material. Uh, and broadly speaking, their perspective uh, on the highway's information, that is, it's acceptable. So I don't know that it necessarily involves making up Hill House Lane any further than what you see, albeit uh, you know, there is some element of conditional uh, detail to sort out here. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Matheson. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not entirely sure I understood that. I mean, at the well, moment, it's, it's, in a the single, papers. It's, it's a single track concrete road, and we're talking about the single access to 37 dwellings. 
Chairman, yeah, the, the advice you have from the Highway Authority, and I'll put it no stronger than that, is what you've got on page 136 and 137, and they say the details are satisfactory. So uh, I, I think the question of the appropriateness of Hill House, Hill House Lane and others who may know more can probably comment on this, was rehearsed uh, as part of the appeal discussion. You've obviously got a, quite a lengthy appeal decision in its rehearsal of a number of issues in the papers, and I won't bore members here today with that. But suffice to say, for the purposes of this morning's consideration of a reserve matters application, what you have on page 137, 136, says the details proposed in this layout are satisfactory. And, and, and subject to the condition, I can only uh, say that you know, what you have there, they describe proposals for the adoptions of, 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 of roads. I'm assuming that the uh, development management engineer involved in this is, is an experienced officer and knows what he's dealing with. Councillor Warboys. Thank you. Sorry. Um, it's, it's another question about Hill House Lane, really. Um, the officers showed us a, a photograph of a, an unbroken hedgerow along the side. And yes, I believe it's the one on the left hand side. There's another slide. For that at, the, at the present time, that hedgerow is completely unbroken and it's been. Um, brought up in the conclusion and also by the appeals officer and I, ju I was just referring back to the proposed development site of the access which just shows a single access but looking at the layout I believe the access is along that hedgerow is broken up by several um, four I think of maybe more six six double width access points to gar presumably to garages Page 159. I think you're referring to slide eight, is it, that we want? Is that what you're referring to? Slide. Principal Street Elevation, slide eight. That's going up the... Lane, isn't it? Is that the one? Can we have these all in one presentation in the future? Yeah, that would. Yes, I think that's. So you have the central access point, and then you have the drive driveways on either side. Of it. I think there's five double width driveways, which breaks up the hedgerow completely, and that's been referred to by the appeals officer, the appeal decision, that there's an alternative site appraisal screen, which showed how the layout of the proposed development could be amended to reduce the number of openings into Millhouse Lane. Is, is, there, is the reduction of the openings part of our conditions or not? Um. Yes, it can be. Uh, it can we can use a suitable condition to, to to reduce it. However, we felt that at the moment it's suitable, given the double garages and access to those needed, um, and the applicant has provided is has retained the hedgerows as, as much as possible. And this is what has been referred to the appeal decision as well, for it to be retained as much as possible. And I think we are at that stage, but it has been retained as much as possible. Okay. Shall we come to that one in the debate, Councillor Warboys? And we can always come back to the officer for further explanations on that one, and we can explore it during debate. What do you think? Yeah? Okay, thank, thank you. Yeah. So, are there any further questions at the moment? Um, just one moment while they just have a confirmation.
Yeah, we can come back to this point. We, we need to look at 159. It does show us some landscaping with regard to your issue. Um, so if we can have uh, Martin Goodwin, the applicant or agent, if you'd like to come forward, please. And um, if you just stick to the three minutes and then you will have some questions which might elucidate on the issue that we're looking at at the moment. But uh, your three minutes, please, and press the button. Thank you. Um, Martin Goodwin, College Architects. I represent the uh, applicant as agent. Um, the applicant and, and ourselves are pleased to have uh, been through a constructive dialogue with your officers um, to adjust and amend our original proposals submitted um, in order to respond to um, sort of neighbour and consultant comments. Um, this is a reserve matters application that follows. Uh, was consistent with the master plan uh, approved for the, what's a wider development area. Um, if it is approved, if you deem to approve this reserve matters, um, I can assure you that the, uh, the local developer won't be land banking this. Um, it's due for uh, commencement in the spring of next year for delivery in autumn 2021. Um, we're pleased at the officer's positive uh, report. Um, and the applicant is happy to accept suggestions of um, changing planting species um, and um, any issues relating to uh, reduction in uh, width of uh, openings to garages. Um, and uh, we, uh, we would only ask that um, slab levels of houses um, could be dealt with as a condition um, on development of some technical design um, sort of following on from uh, planning approval. Uh, thank you Chairman. Thank you for that. Um, do members have questions? Yes, Councillor Matheson. Yeah, the, um, I, mean, I have to say I, I was very disappointed with this the, the actual layout of the houses and I wondered whether you'd considered other approaches to it um, there's, there's two reasons for that and you know so the question really is have you thought about this um, the first one is that if if the, the the five houses on Hill House Lane were facing into the site then they they would not cut through the hedge so very many times um, and the second, even more fundamental point, really, is: d Did you consider the the potential for um, solar gain? Because the site, although the site does not slope tremendously, it does slope southeast. I went to look, um, and you know, did you did you consider that possibility? Um, and I refer to MPPF 148 and 150 on that. Uh, well, thank you, Councillor. Um, the site uh, has been sort of laid out in a sort of coherent and logical way, um, sort of bearing in mind the sort of constraints of uh, sort of orientation and uh, constraints and, and of boundaries. Um, the uh, sort of decision early on was to make a, um, a, sort of a forward-facing um, sort of road-facing development, and that was. Um, uh, sort of accepted as a um, as a sort of design driver from an early uh, at an early stage and, and, and in discussion with officers, um, we have maintained um, the hedgerow to the front uh, on the basis that it is uh, um, adjacent to rural landscape, and uh, there has been um, a lot of um, a, um, planting proposed uh, within the site. And, uh, um, and to, to the other boundaries. Also, um, a 20 metre wide um, uh, strip of uh, woodland um, to the southern boundary, which will... Um, uh, uh, I think we're sort of debating this here. We just want to know the answer to the question which uh, the councillor asked. And I think, um, you know, it needs to be a little bit more succinct to sort of give us a bit of confidence in, in what's happening here. Would you agree, councillor? Yeah, I think the place of the officer falls down to no. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, just one moment, please.
Any more questions for um, the applicant? No? Okay, thank you very much if you'd like to return to your seat. I think Philip wants to do uh, a little bit of a, an update for us, which might help us in our quest. Thank you, Chairman. Just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so, the recommendation on page 95 is to grant planning permission. Um, and obviously, members here will have realised that's a deliberate error on the part of officers. We know that we've already granted it. We already have a planning permission in place. So, actually, the uh, request here is to authorise uh, the approval of the reserve matters. So, rather than grant planning permission, if we can just correct that uh, recommendation to approve the reserve matters. Uh, you'll see uh, also that uh, on page 96 we've recommended the withdrawal of PD rights. Um, following further discussion uh, by officers, we're not proposing the withdrawal of permitted development rights. Uh, the inspector had uh, a quite a wide suite of conditions uh, and discussion as part of his appeal, so we're not proposing to add anything that's more onerous through that. It's quite a generous layout, and our, our view is that uh, it's reasonable to allow occupiers to do the reasonable things that people do in their own homes. Uh, and lastly, um, we've also suggested a construction plan uh, as a condition that's on page 96, but strictly speaking, that duplicates with condition 20 on the outline permission. So, uh, strictly speaking, uh, there is already provision made for by the appeal inspector for um, uh, resolution of construction management issues. Now, as far as landscaping goes, uh, clearly you have a submission before you today, uh, and you may or may not find that acceptable. That's for members at committee. The question of uh, the hedgerow uh, along Hill House Lane was uh, acknowledged, I think, as an issue as part of the uh, consideration uh, by the appeal inspector. Um, and uh, uh, I can see that uh, referenced within the um, appeal decision in various places. Clearly, if you're content or not content with what's before you, that's a choice for this morning. Uh, I mean, from our point of view as officers, uh, we're content in, in putting this forward to you. Um, that's, that's for your judgment as regards acceptability. But what I would say is uh, this scheme largely draws upon, I think, the uh, outline scheme uh, in, uh, in, in working up the details. It uh, includes, um, what's the right phrase? It, it includes uh, the right density. Uh, the inspector specifically required a density at 24 to the hectare and not less and not more. Uh, and, and therefore you have 37 dwellings which I, I think largely do take the, uh, the thrust of the original uh, application forward into uh, reserve matters. Um, I think really probably the rest is for debate by members. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. That sort of tidies that up. So we are now open to no. debate. Yeah. Oh, no, we're not. We're not. <laughs> yeah. How could I forget you? Councillor Norris, please, can we hear from you? Thank you. Uh, I do have some concerns regarding this application. I fully support the town, Needham Market Town Council's comments on page 88, uh, particularly in respect of the location being within a special landscape area. Local plan policy CL2 applies, which states that where development does occur, it should be sensitively designed with high standards of layout, materials and landscaping. Also, the capacity of the existing drainage and sewerage infrastructure. Anglian Waters comments on page 89 conclude by recommending that the local planning authority should seek the advice of the lead local flood authority or the internal drainage board. I cannot locate any evidence in the papers that this has been carried out. I am surprised that it appears to have been dismissed on page 94 under paragraph eight, land contamination, flood risk, drainage and waste, as new issues of relevance have arisen. And the final matter mentioned by the town council being the clustering of the affordable housing element within the proposed layout on page 159. There have been a number of objections submitted by residents relating to the proximity of plot 17 to 22 in the proposed layout on page 159 to the existing residential properties in Anderson Close on the grounds of overlooking, loss of privacy, loss of light and potential devaluation of their properties. The land continues to rise from Anderson Close across the area of the proposed development, proposed development 
to the extent that the proposed dwellings on plots 17 to 22 will be dominant and above the level of the adjoining existing properties in Anderson Close. This contravenes policy 816, protecting existing residential amenity. Uh, as members will have seen from the slides, the application site is on a continual slope. I think the clue is in the name Hill House Lane. The land in this area is higher than the surrounding land and slopes down towards Anderson Close. Um, I would suggest actually it would be advantageous for committee members to be able to appreciate the topography of the land for themselves. I would recommend that a site visit is carried out. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor. I think um, Mr Isbell was listening carefully to you and has one or two points to make. Um, I just would mention that um, I'd actually noticed about the <coughs> special landscape area, but correct me if I'm wrong, Philip, is that no longer uh, in our local plan? Are those, local, those special landscape areas being taken out? I, I heard a voice from the floor. It is at the moment, so it's in the local plan. Well, I realise um, that. So, it, so it, it's in the local plan, but as we move towards the joint local plan... It is. It is going. It is. It is. It attracts less weight, and certainly in, in advice you, res, you you see within national guidance, local designations like special landscape area get lesser weight. I mean, I think in fairness, in this instance, we have an outline decision where a lot of that, that got weighed. So I, I wasn't looking to rehearse the special landscape area argument, given that it had probably been covered quite fully by the inspector. May I carry on, Chairman? Yes, please carry on. So, uh, as regards uh, page 94 and the comment, uh, uh, rather brief to say the least, uh, comment on flood risk, well, clearly the inspector uh, dealt with flooding himself, and I think this was the subject of some debate. So, if I draw members' attention to the conditions on page 128 and 129, conditions 14, uh, 15, and 16, effectively, uh, you do have provisions relating to surface water uh, management and drainage, uh, and I recall there was uh, quite a lot of interest in that issue. So to that extent, when the details come forward for that, uh, we will consult the lead flood authority on those. Uh, my advice in the privacy of these four walls is that perhaps Anglian Water are not as familiar with our outline applications as planning authorities are, and I'll leave it there. Thank you for that. So, further questions for the ward member, if any of you gentlemen would like to have any? No? Thank you very much indeed, Councillor. Thank you. So, we are now open to debate. So, I think I saw a hand. I think Councillor um, Carter was sort of first off earlier on. He had a first hand up. Well, to start with, I'm going to explain why I've been possibly a bit naughty and not declared an interest in this because I was a member of uh, the Friends of Needle Market Countryside six years ago. But this was before this development was a, a part of that. Um, I would have to second uh, uh, Councillor Norris's uh, comments regarding the slope and the topography. Um, we are today looking at... at as far as I'm aware, this has already been granted, aren't we? It is, hasn't it? So I am trying to look at this as a with council hat on today of just this development. Yet it does concern me regarding what plot proceeds we put there, about what residents may end up living there, in regards to the, the access going from this site to the rest of the town to get to the facilities. I'm not certain at this point whether or not the properties that we have listed today are going to be the best suited to the area. So, the problem is I don't have a better suggestion because it's not really the best area to have houses, full stop. But, yeah. I think we concerned. have to get over that one is that it's gone through the inspectors Yeah, it's thing. gone through. Just, yeah. uh, just mm -hmm. certainly wouldn't be suitable for uh, anyone in a wheelchair who wants to get into the town. Thank you for your points on that. 
Um, Councillor Matheson was next, and then Thank Councillor you. Yeah, I, I, um, Before I, I plunge into the debate, I, I wanted to ask Mr Isbell, um, this, um, as Councillor Carter said, um, th this one goes back some years. Um, d does, in dealing with this now, do, do we, are we, re with reference to the current MPPF now, or, or have, do we have to look back to when it was uh, at, at appeal? So, so uh, I would say to you, as a reserve matters application, it's not, strictly speaking, a planning application. Uh, but your consideration should be to have regard to the NPPF and the planning practice guidance as it exists today. The local plan is obviously a document of some elderly vintage, the core strategy is relevant, and you've got to weigh all of those things together. But in terms of the NPPF, yes, I, I would say the, the current version of that document is the thing that I would be re advising you to pay attention to. Councillor Humphreys, thank you. Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I'll come at it from a different, slightly different angle. Um, it's within inside the neighbourhood plan. I know it's not been agreed yet, but, but it is in there. Um, if you were thinking about a logical place to build a development within an existing town and you look down on Needham Market, this would be a logical place to put it. Um, we've been building houses and villages on, on hills since we started building because it's a logical place to build. So that argument of the hill stuff, sort of, you can throw that out of the window, really. Um, it's just the way it is. Um, when I look at the spread of buildings on there, 24 per hectare, that's fantastic. So we've got low density, that's a good thing. When I look at the types of buildings within this development, coming to Councillor Carter's point, uh, actually we've got an excellent mix for all abilities, all ages. We've got two bedroom, three bedroom and bungalows. And it's the bungalow bit, which is fantastic. And when we talk about accessibility, you've actually got really good footpaths and access to the rest of the town through the Anderson Close area, which is the bottom of the estate. So I think as far as accessibility goes, um, it ticks all the boxes and I, I don't think there's an argument against that. Um, I can't see any reason for turning this down. Planning application has already been accepted. Um, so all the arguments about hedges and sustainability and all that pretty much have been argued before, I'm sure. The hedges along the, the new access road, I do get your point, Councillor Matheson, I'm a fan of hedges, I think they should be maintained, and they've tried to maintain them as best they can, because the alternative is, and I'm not a planner, and I'm not a house builder or a developer, but I'm fairly logical, and I think that if you were to turn that around, I'd need two extra roads, which would reduce the amount of garden space, and therefore affect the lifestyle of the people living on the estate. So you can't have your cake and eat it. And I think actually um, this is a fairly reasonable, given the size and the low density of the area, a reasonable plan. And um, the loss of those small portions of the hedgerow due to the requirement for parking, and there is a requirement, um, I think that would sort of cancel it out. And I know you're of a different opinion and, and that's absolutely fine. It's just my point. Um, so all in all, I'm minded to move for approval. I'm not going to do that yet until other people have spoken, but I just can't see any reason that you could refuse it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Warboys, thank you. Um, well, I, I agree with a great deal of what has just been said regarding the approval of the plan. It, it is quite a, an acceptable uh, plan and an acceptable site, and I think there have been great efforts made with regard to the landscape, and in particular, sort of 20, 20 metres of um, planting. However, I think I would like to just, under as we're now into sort of reserve matters, I think I would like to see the, the reduction of the driveways onto the, um, onto the Hill House Lane. It will simply sort of minimise the disruption to the hedgerow. I, I don't think it would uh, at all really sort of uh, inconvenience the people whose garages are there. I, if anything, it would give them more privacy because more of the hedgerow would be retained. Um, I think it's very important this stage to sort of minimise the sort of impact on the existing environment there. It is a, a, a special landscape area and the, the less impact we can have the better, from my point of view. Um, this has been mentioned by the appeals officer, and, it, and I could see it has been a recommended um, change to, this, to the access onto Hill House Lane. So I think under reserve matters, we could, we could perhaps specify that. 
Um, Councillor Warboys, are, are you suggesting that on the double garages, there's a hedge put in front <coughs> of one garage and you're hoping that there's sufficient turning space to get in from the one entrance? Is well, that what you're suggesting? I don't, well, I'm yes, not quite exactly. Sure. Retaining the hedgerow and just having a single access point, which is what the... Um, on uh, page 111, the appeal decision reduce the number of openings onto Hillhouse Lane, which would lead to the retention of more substantial section of hedgerow along much of the frontage. Um, on that point, if, if that was something that you were interested in, we'd have to defer and go away um, to let the officers debate that and discuss it with the applicant. But let's move, carry on with the debate. But that's just something um, that we would need to do. We can't just do it here and now. OK? OK. Can you turn your microphone off, please? Sorry. Um, and who hasn't had a speech yet? I think you've had a go, Councillor Matheson. Anyone else wishing to speak at all? Well, the questions were a long time since, Councillor. Um, but we'll carry on. Uh, no one else wishing to speak? No? All right, then. Well, you've had a... Did you... Oh, I beg your pardon. Well, well Councillor Matheson, I better have second dibs. <laughs> I think Councillor Matheson about it. Thank you. Second Thank you. Groups. Yes, I, I think on the the um, whether whether officers need to go away or not to, to, to look at this this question of, of um, reducing the double width to single width. Um, I thought at seven point four that the officer was um, suggesting that we could we could dive straight in and make that a condition. Um, but anyway, I'd be interested to hear what what the officers say about that. However. Uh, as I hinted in my question to the architect, um, you know this this could be done better, and and the, the there is the slope as you've seen it. It's not a steep slope, but the NPPF does ask us to um, it asks the applicants to take account of the land. It does slope southeast. That advantage is not being used in this instance and um and as as uh, councillor norris has, has said um there should be sensitivity regarding the special landscape area um and so overall i'm not prepared to support this layout on this site albeit obviously that it has outlined permission from the inspector thank you councillor councillor humphreys Madam Chair, thank you. Um, I'm just looking at the design of it and the slope, and I think, I mean, and this is arguable, and um, we've both got different opinions on this, that actually they have thought about the slope, and that's why the bungalows at the top of the hill and the big houses at the bottom, and it doesn't slope as much as Anderson Close. It's also in keeping with many of the properties that are already on there, and uh, in terms of loss of amenity, the sun is generally in the south and northern hemisphere. I don't see that there's any loss of light, not that that really matters, to be honest with you, to Anderson Close. And the only time they do lose it, I believe, is probably when the sun's rising in the morning. Um, other than that, they've got it for most of the day. And you can see that purely by just looking at the map and imagining itself. They even put a north pointer on to help us. So I think a lot of the argument is flawed. Um, the design, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a designer. I don't see how you can design it any better than what they've done. Low density. Um, real good consideration about the slope, in my opinion. And accessibility. Um, I'm minded to move for approval, and that's what I'll do. So I'd like to propose approval of the reserve matters and conditions set. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak who hasn't spoken already? Right, well, uh, yeah, Councillor Gould. Uh, just to uh, um, second um, Councillor Humphrey's proposal. Thank you for that. And then Councillor Carter. I know I've spoken already. Um, it, so. um, however, it, we've heard a, a fair few comments on acceptability on recommendations through people who haven't experienced what it is like of, of the, of the area from a perspective of somebody who has got a disability. If this was to be referred for a site visit and mobility aids were provided, so she could see the topography of the land from the perspective of a wheelchair user and there sort of see whether or not the suitability is for the housing being planted uh, where regardless of where the house is planted on a flat level of land whether it is there they still have to get to that area they still have to 
go through the slopes, and they still have to do some uh, quite uneven landing, which is uh, as it there. It doesn't say in the plan whether it got, they would be levelling the, 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 the land to make it more accessible. It doesn't say regarding the difference in height of the ground, which if you visit at the site, there are differences in heights from that level. So either this goes for referral regarding the, 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 the driveway issues, which I wouldn't be opposed to, or if we had a second, if we had a, a site visit, where people could actually see for themselves, and rather than going on a legs perspective, when you're, you can't really say anything regarding the accessibility, unless you actually genuinely know, and that is something that you do have to learn from experience. Thank you for that, Councillor, and uh, points very well made and very well taken. The only problem I have with that sort of debate is uh, I was in Cornwall last weekend and um, they have hills there regularly and, you know, there must be difficulties and I, I do appreciate what you're saying. It's very helpful, um, but from a personal point of view, um, I feel that uh, we can uh, hope that the... Uh, pavements and such like are suitable for people such in wheelchairs and buggies so I'm a little bit worried about using that as a refusal point and um, I think Phil wants to say something. Chairman I mean I think it, it, it's an important point and uh, I recollect it was something that Councillor Carter himself was you know played an active part in the consideration of this uh, th this application when it was before the inspector uh, and indeed I think somewhere during the appeal 50, paragraph 50, paragraph 50 of the appeal on page 114, uh, the inspector said it was apparent from my site visit that the footway along Hill House Lane is relatively narrow, being a metre in width at its narrow point. The occupant of the wheelchair was, however, able to navigate along it, despite its width and gradient. Although this route may not be ideal for wheelchair users, there is another pedestrian route available from the appeal site along public footpath FP3, which, which, from which access to both the town's both centre of Needham Market and the Stone Market Road can be gained. And the inspector then said, I'm satisfied, therefore, the proposal will be accessible to all future residents. Accepting that there are differing opinions around this and that ultimately you know, you're best guided by what you see on site in, in, in some ways, we have an outline decision on an inspector's judgment of that matter, and I'm not sure quite where I would advise a committee to take it as a result. Thank you for that. That's helpful. Um, while I was speaking, I might as well continue to speak. I think the layout's quite good. Um, I think there are a mix of, of properties there. It's been through extensive um, debates, appeals and so on. Um, and I will be supporting this application. So unless anybody else wishes to speak on the motion, um, I don't feel that a site visit is necessary and um, I'm quite happy to go to the... Um, Councillor Mayor, I have seen you, Councillor Norris, but let the de debate run, if you would, please. Councillor Mayor? I, I do feel uh, the point about the, the hedge is well made. Um, I, I like to see that retained. But I don't, I don't think um, going to single driveways would work without moving the properties back. Um, that would reduce available garden space. Um, putting extra internal roads will have drainage impacts. So I think it makes the best of what is a difficult situation. Retain what we can of the hedge but maximise um, the layout to, so the residents benefit. Right, well, we are in debate, so Councillor Norris, I'm afraid you can't join in on that. So on this point now, then, I have a proposer and a seconder, so all those in favour, please vote. One, two, three, four. And those against? Three. Four. The chairman's casting the vote. Was it four? <laughs> Sorry. No, you've, it's only three. You've miscounted. It's three Sorry. to four. Sorry. The final bit of the meeting to check we've got everything sorted. Site inspections? None, Chair. Thank you very much. And so that is that. Thank you very much indeed.